Hello everybody, thank you for waiting so long for this, uh, this, uh, this very small paper. I brought my reindeer today, though. not that there's any reindeer in Marshwood Forest as far as I know, but there, there are, as you can see, wallabies. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I say my father, you know, look out for wallabies, and he's, he thinks I'm joking. And we see a wallaby, he, he took the picture, he's, he's good at pictures. So, there's, there's the wallaby. And how do I change this? Or do I just ask uh, something to do with the... Yeah. <clears throat> just do just the hit, hit the next slide. You could do that, yeah. Or you could press the arrow. Ah, right. Next to the right. Here we are. Marshwood Forest. It's a, it's a royal forest. It's in Mar the Marshbone Valley. Valley. There's a river there. And there's a, the chalk hills in the north. As you can see, we've already mentioned. Where is it? I better look on this screen. Hulu, White Barrow Hill and and Burr Hill. And there's the there's there's clay lands it, it was previously rather marshy but it's it was drained a long time ago and the, the river kind of rationalised. And then it rises gently to the I think it's a sandstone limestone mix of hills at Corham. You know, David did I get that right? The I thought, I thought so, yes. So th there's the map I drew for Kenny. So there's a lot of things on the map, and there's a lot of things on the map I don't really have time to mention. I'll, I'm just going to, you know, trot on through, and if, if we can, if we've got time at the end, we can, you know, we can point to things on the map and I'll tell you about them. So the next picture, this is, uh, this is, uh, this is No Man's Land Hamlet. You see, it was a royal forest in medieval times. I, I believe it was a pre-Norman forest, which is quite rare. And uh, there was a place called No Man's Land. It was the uh, it was a forest. It wasn't anywhere in the parishes until the extra the extra parochial act. Did I pronounce that right? I'm really lousy at pronouncing stuff sometimes. The extra parochial act of 1837 which brought everything into a parish, the sort of parish support, the support of a priest and the sort of organisation. But places like, say, Dartmoor, for example, was, it, was, it was out of land. And people used to live in these sorts of places and they were, you know, smugglers and outcasts and folks who didn't want to get involved with the parish and folks who didn't go to church and um, just you know, just just people really, and these these communities there's several over this country called no man's land or no parish, you know, settlement or you know a, a similar thing like that. That's where this came from. This is no man's land. It used to be a bunch of rebels, shall we say, poachers from the forest. There's various communities within the forest. There's the the Romanists, which we'll get to, and there's the forest people who the Victorian scholars, they used to say these folks were descended from the prehistoric people of the land, that they were quite genetically distinct. We don't know if that's true, that's probably just Victorian romanticism. But these, these people were notorious poachers and they, they kind of lived outside of the law pretty much. <coughs> but you see, No Man's Land these days is a, a kind of a, an alternative village. There's an alternative settlement in the uh, in the north of the forest, it's called Blackways. And it was set up, I believe, in 1899. And it was set up as a, a Marxist utopian community, sort of people getting away from the city and going out to the countryside to form their own society and bring all the problems of the city to the forest. But that's the site. This is No Man's Land, which is something else entirely. They're, they're snobby rivals of Blackways. And so, in, in, in defiance, they, they paint all their cottages white. These are cottages and the original houses must have been pretty rough huts. The, the, the houses you see these days are probably built period 1930s to 1960s. They're fairly modern buildings, they're quite small. And they're, they're all painted white. Now, now here is your typical no Man's Land fan family in the typical No Man's Land form of transport. <laughs> they, they, they don't let cars in their village, so 
everybody's got a pan cart or a wheelbarrow when they, they leave the cars out over the borders and they pull stuff in and out. So that's a, that's a sort of typical, typical no man's land scene. <sighs> and uh, let's, let's get on to the next one. Next, ah, this one. Yep, here's the Roman road. There's a Roman road going through the forest and there's a, there's a, there's a villa by it, but that's, uh, that's uh, out of my remit at the moment. It's, uh, it's dissimilar to the drove road. The drove road, if you see it, I've got, I haven't got a picture on the slide. I took loads of pictures when I was in the forest, but I've not been able to present a temp for them. You see, I, I wrote out a whole load of, you know, crib notes and pictures in, and it came to 50 pages. <laughs> I thought, I better not let Kenny, you know, Kenny's going to really blow a gasket if I say, there we are, 50 pages. See, <laughs> you know, three, 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 three minutes we want, 30 minutes. <laughs> So, I, as I said, I have got a picture of the drove road, and the drove road, it's like a long, narrow field that's been driving the flocks through. The Roman road, by contrast, it's... Uh, you see the length of this room? It's about <coughs> half as... Uh, half as... Uh, half of... that's how wide it is. It's quite overgrown now. It's, uh, it's, it's still a bridal way, and, you know, some people have been using it, but it's quite overdrawn but uh, that leads to the Roman villa which is famous you must have heard of it so I uh, I kind of took a picture of that I managed to get my feet thoroughly wet as you can see but all these pictures are my own pictures well my father helped with the wallaby but this is this is the pub the pub is called the Hit or Miss Inn and it's uh, well, it's been revamped by about ten times, but the original pub was a, a rough pub. For, it was a poacher's inn. It was uh, it's uh, just over the over the Black Dog Bridge on the Drove Road, and it's uh, it's metal. The road is metalled as far north as there. If, if you go and then there's the Gypsy Church, which is practically by the side of this road, and you go a bit further on, it kind of peters out to a greenway, which I was describing with for the drover's road but this is you can drive up there we hit to this inn it's a poacher's inn and as you can gather by the name and uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, said to be 18th century but there are older parts so what so i was told I, I don't know how true that is it looks all 18th century to me but i'm no expert on buildings they, they do good food there I don't know if you've ever been, but I highly recommend it for food. And uh, it's, a, as I said, there's a story to do with it. And you, you, you used to be able to go into the pub and you would give the landlord the correct password. And in return, you'd be served up with fresh, fresh venison. <laughs> that's, the, that's the story I've told, but I, I don't know. You, you really didn't document these things. How am I to tell? <laughs> Anyway, you, you go on in now and, you know, me talking about the deer and the antlers, they, they do serve up venison. It's all farmed. <laughs> and they've got lots of, uh, they've got the chandelier and the table all made of antlers and it's very sort of, the vibe is Scottish Victorian hunting lodge. I, I, oh, oh, oh. You, you should see my place. It's a great way of getting them paled. <laughs> <coughs> yes, yes, it's uh, it's uh, complicated and kind of beyond this talk. There was me. Next start slide. Ah, here's the pylon. This is the pylon that fails. If you've uh, seen the original map, shall we go back to the original map? Let's go back to the map. To, you know, there's only a few slides so I can just whack on through. If you've seen the map, as I said, I, I marked out the line of the pylons. As I marked out the ordnance survey fashion with the ticks either side that, that not representing the actual pylon kind of thing. But there they used to be a OS map of this area. It was, you know, Kenny was it number 76 or 77? You can't get them. They, uh, they were destroyed in a, 
in a in a in a warehouse fire in the early seventies. So uh, this is a map from me walking over the area, and it's it's also from memory. So it's it's not to scale, and it might not be quite accurate, but you can see the you know there's the ah, let's see, here we are. Here's the here's the drove road. Yep. Here's the Roman road going through. And uh, there's corn down to the south, people driving up here. We don't cross Black Dog Bridge. And there's the Hittimans Inn, yes? And uh, down here is the, the Pylon line. And uh, you'll notice it, it actually arches round further to the east, to the north of the forest. And it avoids the forest line altogether. And uh, well, we can find out why, because you've got this line of pylons. You have the pylon, where's my picture again? Most of the pylons are, whoa, very old imperial ones. And I will do it all wrong. It's hard to demonstrate it. There's various designs of pylons. The imperial ones, they're kind of like this, with the arms shaped slightly sloping. That's the imperial ones. The more modern metric ones, the arms stick out good and straight. So you've got this. Uh, I didn't take. They've all pylons all have numbers. I didn't take the number of this. This is the pylon by the Roman road, and it's always failing. And it's the main line from the north through to it's what is it? Two hundred and seventy-five kilovolts built in 1930, so it was just after the founding of the National Grid, that was late 20s, but that's another area of history. It was upgraded to 400 kilovolts in 1960. And uh, as I said, it's the main, main line into, Mar into, into Hookland. I said, this pylon, which is slap bang on the Roman road, is the one that's always failing. So if there's a power cut in Hookland, you know how many power cuts they have in Hookland? They all have power <coughs> generators and they are sick of it. This is what happens. This darn pylon is the one that fails on and they've replaced it so many times and yet it still fails. And so whether that's anything to do with Roman Road, I don't know. I don't think any studies have been done of it. If anybody knows any studies, they could tell me. But uh, anyway, so we will tack on to the Ah, this one. This is the Gypsy Church, and you see it's in the forest, and then it's old story. I, I just said it pretty much there. It's uh, it's up on the Grove Road. It's uh, built in the late 1870s. It's a tin tabernacle, as they call it, a, a church made cheaply out of uh, out of corrugated iron, and. Uh, what is it? William Morris, he hated the things. He called them a, a carbuncle. Did I get that right? Carbuncle? Oh well, he, he, he thought them ugly and bad things. But you, you see these all over the country. A lot have been pulled down because they've, they've kind of outgrown their uses and some are listed even. I don't think this one's listed at all. It was, uh, it was put on by a local landowner for the the, the gypsies who used to camp at this particular crossroads. Of course, the crossroads is a liminal space, and so there must be much stories there, but I don't actually know any stories about that crossroads. I'm sorry to... I know lots of stories all over the forest, but you know things like to the south there's the Black Dog Bridge, which is another liminal place, a bridge going over the river, probably replacing the ford, and it's called Black Dog Bridge. You know, there's lots of places called Black Dog Ridge. I can't tell you any Black Dog stories about it, but it's just a name. And it, anyway, so the local landowner built a built a little ch church here to sort of you know in, in, encourage good citizenship. And the the folks, the, the snobby incomers from from Blackways and from No Man's Land, they were up in the hollow, they said they didn't want to encourage troublemakers to the forest and so forth and so forth. Despite the fact that it wasn't the gypsies who were making the trouble. It was probably the incomers, but that was by the by. Anyway, the church is still open and it's, it's frequented now by the, 
the, the people from Blackways and No Man's Land and the very people who sneered when it was opened, which is a bit ironic. They, they, they've recently done it up and repainted, as you can see. They, they had to put in a new floor and all. So it's, uh, it's still going. So, ah, here is the Roman villa. Well, it's, that's not the Roman villa. Can you see what that is? Can you guess? I know some of you all know what it is. What you might have associated with a Roman villa. In fact, there's one in London, actually. It's underground. Nobody can tell me. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a myth. Oh, damn. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. I, you know, I. Does that does it look like a mythatic shrine to you? It does, doesn't it? Yeah. It was originally a low roof on it, and then this sort of this sort of low open temple. The villa's mostly been covered again. Up. I've got some lovely pictures of the excavation. It was excavated in the 1920s and they found this fantastic, though I will say compared to some examples, a rather clunky sort of mosaic. You know, a good mosaic, but not a perfect artistic, you know, done by a local craftsman kind of mosaic. And um, there was quite a few finds and it was, it was widely publicised. It was a, a big, important villa. And so, but I just focused, this is one of the overground things you see these days, the, the Mithratic Shrine. And uh, as I said, Tansen speculates the villa was built in a remote, there's several theories as to why this huge, great, fancy villa, obviously owned by important people, were, was in this quite remote area. This Tansen, this is what he says. He says it was built in a remote area because it's Christians feeling fear and persecution. That's his theory. And the other theories have been that it was somebody who was managing the woodland and they, they wanted to live next to their source of wealth. And uh, Cashin, Cashin says something else which is somehow believable but quite controversial. You know what Cashin said? Cashin said in Roman times there was no forest at all. It was empty. It was, uh, well not empty, it was farmland. And so you know, the villa wasn't in the forest. It was it was in the farm surrounded the surrounded the villa. And I've been looking around seeing if there's some folks who've done a say a LIDAR survey of the, the, the this royal forest in order to see if there's any subsurface remains that indicate farmland or even even other other remains. So Cashin's theory it's there's something persuasive about it, but it's never been proved. None of these things have been proved. They're just ideas, really. You know how archaeology goes. Mm -hmm. Anyway, you had this old Roman villa, and uh, another thing about this Roman villa was it was a person who worked on the excavation was uh, was uh, John Tolkien. So he he, he took a, a certain amount of you know. There's a lot of time depth in archaeology in his, 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 his in the Lord of the Rings and you kind of wonder if he took some ideas from this forest but that's an area for future study two, 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 two right yo yeah, I'm just hey yo last slide oh, just <laughs> <laughs> anyway I these stories I, I got loads of stories I got about 10 times more stories than mm -hmm. I told you so I mostly got them from the Reader's Digest British, British Folk Tales book. You know, the big, big black book with the, the, the gold picture of the oozer with the, with the corns on on the cover. You've seen that book? Yeah. Oh, right. Somebody knows that book. Yeah. And Catherine Briggs, of course. You got any questions? Right, right, yo. Um, I think that was really, really good. That's one of my favourite talks, I think. Um, okay, two <laughs> things. Um, what like, do you have a plan of what you're going to do with all the stories that you've collected? And also, um, I think what you've done, you've like you've made like a deep map. Haven't you? You've done like a deep mapping yeah. exercise. Like, is that I started? With, I started like, with a map, and I, I sent the map to Kenny. I did. I started with a map. He was the first to see. I wasn't sure what to do. I thought, you know, here's a big space in the middle of the 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 the, the off the off the map, and. You know, a place like Crookton, 
there's going to be a forest A, and there's going to be a royal forest B. Yes. yes. You, you, you. That, that all looks. I haven't, I haven't put anything, you know, out of, out of the idea there. So I, I got a lot of my, I got my ideas from all over. In fact, I got my photographs from all over on my travels. Most of them are complete. Yeah, they're just stuff I found, really. Yeah. And uh, you know, as a part of what I'd be writing with sort of you know reality check this picture where I took it. I mean, for example, you know, I I did introduce my dad to the wallabies. We, we found him on the Isle of Man. You see, not not in England or or, or Brooklyn even, but uh, you know the wallabies are real, and I told you where to find them. <laughs> so, and the the big white pub the. Hit and miss. That's a uh, that's a pub in Scotland, of which are several stories told. I just wanted to sign a bit, but it's uh, it's all pictures I've taken. But long and complicated story. Most of the ideas behind the sort of going back to Catholic about the Cotswolds. It's about the wire forest, or which is uh, it's, no, it's not wire. It's which wood, of course, in 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 not so much Cotswolds, sort of Oxfords. Oxfordshire, sort of borderline Cotswolds, not right up on the walls or the hills. So, you know, like the idea of the sort of the pubs and the, the stories about the, the, the highwaymen Tom, Dick, and Harry, and the, 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 the pubs and the, the, the gypsies, they, they all came from that book. But it's all, the stories are all there, they're just like kind of just. Bung them all together. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't worked out what to do with them yet. So I've been probably showing to Kenny if you can work through 50, 50 pages. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. So, Amazing. Any other questions? I better round up my reindeer. No reindeer. I don't know much about deer in the forest. Well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah.